So I just finished Halo Infinite, and after about nine hours, uh, it was pretty fun. Now I should go ahead and state that this video is not for the Halo fans, or at least the hardcore one, who's played every single campaign and sunk years of their lives into the series, and really care immensely how a Halo game is treated. I respect that, but that is ultimately not me. See, while everyone else spent their childhood playing the first three games, I was too busy shitting in diapers, so I don't have a relationship with these games. When it comes to Halo campaigns, I have a very sparse history with them. Uh, I played Halo 1 this year, but ultimately got stuck in the cave at the beginning of the game, then tried to skip it and play Halo 2, just to end up closing it like 5 minutes later because I didn't feel like playing it. Years back, I tried playing Halo ODST, but I was incompetent and couldn't figure out how to play video games, and way long ago I played co-op campaign in Reach with a friend, and the only memory I have is him telling me to go to the light at the beginning of the game, so I started walking towards it, and he went, I was kidding, that's gonna kill you. <laughs> so this is the first Halo campaign that I've ever played all the way through, and that is who this video is mainly for. If you're somebody who's never picked up a Halo game or is a very casual fan of it, uh, then here is what I think. And if you really want to know how this game is from the perspective of a massive Halo fan, I'd say just wait until Chris Raygun releases his video on it, because that man is my main source for all the context I know about Halo. But before I get into the campaign, here's some no-spoiler stuff. Uh, without spoiling anything, I will say that ultimately this was a pretty fun campaign. There were a couple times that I felt the writing was a bit too basic and generic, or some of the dialogue was a bit cheesy, and there were definitely a decent amount of times that I found that the level design and fighting in that level reeked of modern-day Bethesda levels of repetitiveness, uh, but nonetheless, I had a pretty fun time. And also, as someone who's never played the games before, that fact didn't affect the story. I mean, the plot revolves around previous plots, and if I really gave a shit about the story, then it probably would have made an impact on me. Um, but to me at least, I was just able to get through it just fine. There's a character that you spend the entire storyline with that I have a pretty heavy feeling that the Star Wars fans of Halo who don't do anything but shit, piss, and come on Twitter.com are fuming over how she's written her overall story plot. But, uh, those kinds of people have absolutely zero value when it comes to anything and everything, and in my personal opinion, I don't fucking care. I thought she was cute and had some adorable moments. But then there's also another character that you meet right at the beginning of the game that I absolutely fucking despised for most of the story because he is ripped straight out of the book of characters I relentlessly hate. I guess it's not much of a spoiler to say that I really did enjoy the gameplay, especially with the grappling hook. I overused the fucking shit out of that, and it never once got any less badass. There's a couple fun things that come out of it, like being able to just grab weapons mid-fight, but probably my two favorites are one, in the beginning, I was shooting the Jackal's shield and then using the grappling hook, but then I found out you could just shoot a grapple at them, knock their shield down, and then immediately shoot another one and take them down, which I proceeded to use for every Jackal I came across. And two, Spider Chief. Spider Chief. Spider Chief. Does whatever a Spider Chief can. And then finally, because I've heard that Halo 5's boss fights were pretty bad with you having to fight one dude like five fucking times, uh, that's not really the case here. At most, you fight one robot, like, twice, but it's not terrible. Other than that, each boss fight is a separate character, and overall, I didn't really mind them. Alright, so now on to the spoiler. And, uh, if you want to hear my very small and basic thoughts on Infinite's multiplayer, skip to the timestamp on screen or in the description and comment sections. So, three, two, one. Okay, now let's get to spoiling. Halo Infinite's story falls up after Halo 5 and Halo Wars 2, uh, two games that I've never played, but like I said, it didn't really fuck with the story for me. I could get a main understanding of it, despite not knowing who any of these characters are or how Atriox died. But speaking of Atriox and death, uh, this game started off pretty strong with it immediately showing Atriox killing Master Chief, and as someone walking into this with zero context, that was a pretty shocking moment. Uh, but of course, Master Chief gets saved and spends the rest of the game running through this banished land, to ultimately, I guess, destroy the main tower or something. The entire time I thought it was to destroy the guy who sounds like the orcs in Skyrim, because he keeps on popping up throughout the story, sucking Atriox's dick and saying that Master Chief is gonna die, but once I killed him, the story just kept going on, and the final boss fight ended up being this weird predator-looking chick that only appeared in, like, two cutscenes of the game. And that ends with a reconciliation between Master Chief and Cortana, and I'm guessing kind of retconning Halo 5? Or trying to make up for its ending? 
Okay, to be honest, the basis of Halo 5's campaign was given to me as uh, Cortana was a twist villain in Halo 5. And um, with that in mind, there is a scene that shows that Cortana did a good thing when it came to dealing with Atriox and the Banished. I'm assuming. So the way I just fucking took that was that uh, 343 was like, oh, well, uh, here here's the thing. Cortana actually good guy. Um, well, I guess that's cool. But speaking of Cortana, uh, here's where we get the character that I'm sure the shit-eating Halo fans are pissing themselves in anger. Weapon. An AI that was meant to be deleted, but instead ended up surviving, and you travel throughout this land with her help, and she basically is a carbon copy of Cortana, but with all of her memory wiped. So it's as if Cortana and Master Chief never met. Uh, and overall, I found her to be a very pleasant welcome, with a lot of fun moments between her and Chief. There we go, last gun open. Let's go fire it. So, let me get this straight. It's okay for you to make jokes. Correct. The cutscene where she ultimately finds out that she's a copy and accepts her fate and getting deleted just for Chief to go against that rule and keep her going actually made me shed a tear. And the ending of this game, <laughs> funny enough, uh, did Disney Star Wars better? <laughs> Uh, with her being asked what her name is, and she looks up at Master Chief for his permission, and then he just lets her name whatever she wants, but she never actually says the name. It's heavily implied, and you know what she's named herself, but she never says it, and all it fucking did was make me think of the ending to Rise of Skywalker, and just only the fact that this is actually nice and wholesome, while Rise of Skywalker was just load and reload album covering the Skywalker name. So yeah, overall, I, I found Weapon to be kind of cute and adorable. I liked her. Uh, the boss fights were alright, nothing too magnificent in my eyes, but there was, I guess, enough variance. Probably my favorites would be Jega Radomni, because this fight has a very heavy horror feel, until you realize they have the threat sensor, which allows you to see where enemies are. Then it becomes pretty fucking easy. <laughs> And then Ashram, because while his fight's the pretty basic, get him down to a certain health and destroy his shield, there was a moment where he uh, brought out a red gravity hammer, and that made me genuinely scared for the rest of the fight. All the other fights were pretty basic, with uh, a Junin Resolution second fight being the easiest fucking thing there, because I had a Sentinel Beam, and the map gives you a hard light weapon ammo kit that gives you infinite refills, along with Sentinels that will just drop Sentinel Beams, which gives you more ammo. So it was just a matter of running around the map and occasionally shooting. Uh, that does remind me though, while it's not an official boss fight, there is a fight between you and three phantoms, and it is, without a doubt, the worst fight in the game, because, again, I had a sentinel beam and infinite ammo for it, so it was just constantly shooting this beam at a ship until I ran out, refill, repeat, until the three ships are destroyed, and overall, it was immensely fucking boring. But with that being said, the campaign was still overall pretty fun, for the most part. Except for one character. Echo216 is ripped straight out of the book of characters I fucking despise, because for the entire, like, first half of the game, he is the most whiniest fucking baby, and what makes me passionately hate him with all my heart is he spends the entire time just complaining about how Master Chief is gonna get him killed, and overall just acting like he's smarter and better than Master Chief. Even Eshram fucking acknowledges the fear that Chief puts into people's eyes, and yet this fuck-off nobody wants to act like he's so much more superior. Shut the fuck up and go fuck yourself. And yeah, later in the game he crumbles and admits that he's a pathetic fuck that doesn't know anything and becomes a better written character, and he no longer becomes annoying from that point, but all that does is just give me a feel of generosity that that overall his character is probably the biggest complaint I have with the story. Only other complaint I have is occasionally you'll get a level that feels like 343 got raided by Bethesda because it consists of enemies constantly spawning and all you have to do is kill them and it becomes pretty fucking boring after a while. The biggest offender of this would be the basic and advanced training levels right before the fight with Jega and Eshram. But nonetheless, it was still a pretty fun campaign. My favorite moment would probably be when I was sent to Eshram's main tower and on the way there it just, it's just fucking constant enemy camps and right at the first one there was a scorpion. So I brought that with me the entire way there because it just absolutely fucking demolishes everything and anything in its path and I ended up getting an achievement for bringing it to the tower without it even getting destroyed. I wasn't even trying. And I guess also just 
any moment with a uh, weapon was pretty nice and, and wholesome and again cute and adorable I, I really liked her in this game so yeah for a non-halo fan and this being the first halo campaign i've ever played all the way through it was a pretty enjoyable one even for its flaws and occasional times i had no idea what was going on writing what i would recommend it to someone who doesn't know halo now on to the multiplayer since that's pretty much the big factor when it comes to halo i guess and while I can't really go into all the details about if it's better or worse than Halo 4 and 5, uh, I can say for someone who absolutely sucks shit at online multiplayer FPS games, this one's pretty good. I still suck shit in it, but unlike in games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, or even Destiny, I still find myself overall having a fun time nonetheless, given the weird gravity shit that can happen in this game. Or I end up having a lot of moments where I feel like I'm better than I usually am at this kind of game. There's just... You know, a good amount of moments where I'd have died and just, in response, fucking laughed because it was funnier than shit, and I respect the game for that. I feel like that really does say something, that this game's multiplayer can still drive me into playing it despite me not really liking that kind of stuff and preferring the more single-player games, and also just still overall enjoying it despite how fucking terrible I am. So yeah, overall Halo Infinite is a pretty fun game. Is it a good Halo game? Can't tell ya. But uh, I can tell you that it's very enjoyable, even for a non-Halo fan. And uh, that's pretty neat. Oh, and then there's a Craig Easter egg on the campaign map where he's an infamous rock star. 10 out of 10, best game of the century. And of course, everyone has their own opinion. But my opinion is the best opinion. I'm sure you figured that out already.